I want to talk about um, near harmonies first. And, and near harmonies would be something like a singlet. And that's a color paired with um, some of its tints or tones or shades, usually a very calm situation when you make a scheme out of a singlet. Um, and so you can see here, um, we've got the full saturation red with a tint, a shade, and then a tone in the front. Here we see it on the white background, so we can see that contrast of value as well that we did with the black and white and color here on a black. So a dyad would be two colors then as a scheme or a color with black or white. So let's talk about some formal harmonies. And harmonies are generally made up of color combinations that might represent the full spectrum. And the idea um, is that our brains want to see full light. So we need areas represented as scheme members. And so we can, we can start to think of harmonies as colors that, that are representing legs of a chair. So stability is determined by the number of legs in the chair. So the most basic harmony of more than two colors is the analog. And this is a color and two of its neighbors. So this is a very calm mood. Um, it's sort of like an expanded singlet. And so here you've got yellow and green, or yellow green and yellow orange, those three that are right next to each other. So we can think of this as a three-legged chair or three-legged stool, and it's quite stable generally very calm and mood again, and a very easy on the eyes color scheme. So they generally have then that main color right in the middle, and then the two neighbors, each, each pointing in opposite directions on the color wheel, they sort of lock in that main color and they stabilize it. So in other words, the, the, orange and the red orange and the red will lock in the position of the orange. So the yellow, the, the yellowish orange will feel more yellow and the red will almost feel more red violet. You can, if you don't want to think of it as a, as a stool necessarily, you could think of it as a bench attached to a wall, very stable and easy place to sit your eyes. Here's an analog. Van Gogh is really great for examining color harmonies. All right, a complement. This is perhaps the most controversial of color harmonies. And, and I'm hesitant to, to necessarily call it a harmony. So a complement is a dyad of two opposing colors. And, and this is the most dynamic in mood. So it's almost the most harsh kind of combination. So if you think of a chair with two legs, it's not very stable to sit on, is it? And you have to have complements exactly precisely right for them to look anywhere near correct. And there's, there's a lot of caveats here. Um, it's actually not advisable to use complements at full saturation. They kind of work like repelling magnets. They're so opposite from each other on the color wheel. They are like the most opposite you can get on the color wheel. It's a straight line across, right? So red and green are a classic complementary pair. It also works for tints and tones and shades of the original hues. So I mentioned that the two harmonies at full saturation aren't a good idea because they're so opposite they can be jarring. But if we put complements and their tints and tones and shades together, that still works as a complementary system, but it's calmed down quite a bit. So if we have red with a tinted green, it is way less jarring on the eyes than red and full saturation green. 
Um, it's still a complementary pairing if we have the toned red and the toned green alone. It's still a complementary pairing. You don't have to have a full saturation version of either of the members. There's actually a, a couple of complements going on here, but the dominant one is the red and sea green. Um, and, and I want to back up to someone we mentioned before, the Chevrolet. And Chevrolet made a whole practice of figuring out um, after image. And these are, these are optical complements that, that are a result of, of you looking at light and then quickly looking away to something like a white wall and you see an after image. Um, and the after image is the opposite color, the optical opposite color. And optical projected light colors are actually different in complements than mixing complements where we see reflected light. So the optical complement of yellow is blue, but the mixing complement of blue is orange. And this, this causes some interesting shifts available in complementary systems. And, and for sure, the optical complements are less jarring on the eye than the mixing complements. So for an example, um, the optical complement of red is a sea green, and a sea green is a green moved towards blue just a touch. So it being just a touch moved makes it a lot more pleasant on the eyes. Whereas something like the blue and orange combination, um, to me, um, is actually quite horrible. Um, I don't think that these two colors look good together, even though traditional color theory holds them as being complements and harmonious. Um, and again, I've, I've written this before. Um, given what I just said, um, those optical complements that look good together, I think still work then with the mixing of color. So not just projected color, but the optical complements identified by after image still work well when we're seeing them as reflected color in paint. So look at that excellent line there, that excellent iPad drawing line. And this is what I mentioned. Um, compliments are problematic. Um, and, and so some people, and, and I'm coming around to this, um, consider compliments to be actually a very strong form of clash. And again, I'll use that blue and orange example. Um, these to me are horrible. Um, this doesn't feel settled. It, it feels way too dynamic. Um, it doesn't feel like a good pairing, even though traditionally um, this would be considered complements. If we shift them just a little bit visually or tone them or shade them or tint them like has happened here, they rest a lot more easily on the eyes. So here it is, if you need the rule, never use them together at full saturation. Vary at least one of them. And so here we've got the red with a toned green. And you can see this is much easier on the eyes than the blue and orange combination. All right, split complements, uh, a much more rested situation. Uh, we've got three legs of the stool again here. And so this stool, this chair, is much more sitable. Uh, split complements are a color, and then the two colors that are the sides of the would-be complement. So the driver of the situation of the overall mood is that single color, like down on the bottom left here. So here's our blue and our orange and yellow orange pairing works way better than the blue and the orange. 
And we could call a split complement a type of triad, a triplet. Um, by squeezing the legs closer to complementary, the situation becomes more dynamic because we're getting closer to that full opposition. The further you spread the legs out to equidistant positions, um, the more stable the chair becomes. This is a, a great example of split complements, another Van Gogh painting. Look at that terrible drawing on there. Um, the good lines in the back are one set of split complements. The iPad drawing lines are another set shifted to the right a bit. So a pure triad would then be those three colors at equal lateral triangles. So you can see we could start to make geometric shapes here. So instead of just lines, I could draw a triangle here um, from the outside points of the lines. So definitely more stable than complements or split complements. This is the classic triad right here. These are the primary colors. They make a triad, the red, the yellow, and the blue. Equal spacing, equal legs of the stool. We move up to four legs and we get the tetrad or the quartet. So four colors. So the colors at the points of any square or rectangle. So here we've got a perfect square. And so everywhere that points at all the corners, um, those are the colors, the members of the scheme. Interesting pairing of a quartets here. It's not a pairing, it's a quartet. We narrow that square in, we get more dynamism. So we've got a rectangle here. And again, here's that situation, the more dynamism is because this is being squeezed closer to oppositional, um, straight across the circle. Got blue and blue green and orange and yellow orange. And so back to this painting, we can see that this is built out of a quartet. Um, we've got the yellow and violet, and we've got the green and red. Little specks of blue here and there. So little specks of colors outside the main scheme can add interest, but just little, little bits. You don't want too much to disrupt the main scheme. <clears throat> 